So how can we help this soma, this melatonin, whatever we want to call it? Uh, the number one way is sleep. So as the yogi said, that the uh, that the soma is is released at night, um, and as we've seen, that melatonin is released at night. So if we can get the right amounts of sleep, um, that's going to hugely improve things. And obviously, not everyone has a has a say in their sleep patterns and so on and so forth. So I understand that. Um, but you know, lots of little tiny things they can all add up to help, hopefully. Um, so it's been seen that two thirds of adults in developed countries are not getting enough sleep. Um, so really trying to get those eight hours. Um, I know lots of people say they can function on six. You know, I lived most of my life like functioning on six um, until I read uh, Matthew Walker's Why We Sleep. And then that made me really think about things. So I recommend that book if you want a bit more detail. Um, so exercise is good. Now exercise releases serotonin. And we have seen that serotonin is needed for melatonin. Um, so yeah, exercise is a good way, but not to uh, before bed. So give it two to three hours um, before sleeping uh, if you want to do any exercise. Obvious ones are obviously avoid caffeine and nicotine and the stimulants, so they're going to affect your sleep. And then having a sleep schedule. Um, so the same time of going to bed and waking up each morning. Um, I'm also going to add to this in trying to slowly get in time with nature. So the more light we receive, the better for the production of melatonin. Now, uh, if we can try and go to bed closer to sunset and rise closer to sunrise, then it's going to be a huge, huge help. Now, I've never been a morning person, never. Uh, and the last month or so, I've found myself, I've managed to sort of slowly get there where I'm going to bed soon after sunset and go, waking up just before sunrise, just naturally now. Um, and I'm now a morning person out of nowhere. Just, I don't know why, this is that subtle difference. Um, and yeah, I'm now functioning first thing, whereas I used to spend like an hour in bed. Um, so yeah, try and slowly get into rhythms. Obviously there's shift work as well that can affect this, but if you can, um, sleeping at night when it's dark, waking and spending your time when it's daylight. Um, our meals, so avoiding large meals before bed. There are obviously as well foods that we can eat, but that's going to be related more to your diet. Uh, sorry, uh, to your to the way you are. Uh, it's very personal. Um, there are obviously foods that will benefit all people. So there are foods with melatonin. There are foods with uh, tryptophan. Um, also as well, to consider foods with omega-3 and vitamin D, and obviously vitamin D from the sunshine as well, because they produce serotonin, which is an important part of the process. Uh, try and avoid alcohol because that affects your REM sleep. So we need all the uh, different sleep cycles. Um, napping after three as well, that's going to affect sleep late later on trying to relax before bed. So maybe think about, you know, meditation, maybe if that's in your practice Some breath work, pranayama can be useful, uh, a yoga nidra as well. And yoga nidra all around is going to be a great way of, of you know, producing soma and producing melatonin. Um, a hot bath before bed can be beneficial. So that cools the internal body temperature down. Uh, if you remember the graph, I'll bring the graph back up. The core body temperature uh, uh, reduces as throughout the night, as, as we get deeper into sleep. So starting off with a, a cooler body temperature is hugely beneficial for our sleep. Now, a dark, cool, gadget-free bedroom. Now, we've seen that light can affect the melatonin release during our sleep, so making our bedrooms as dark as possible. Um, but also, this gadget-free, so there's been research showing that just having your mobile phone near you affects your sleep. 
Um, I'm also going to add to that a little bit of research which has been, well, it's been widely disputed really, but I think it might be something, is that uh, mobile phone signals and Wi-Fi affects melatonin. Um, so I'm going to suggest maybe turning the Wi-Fi and your mobile phone off at night. Uh, if you think there's eight hours of the day that you're not receiving those signals that may or may not have an effect. You know, it's no biggie if you turn them off at night and it doesn't have an effect. But if it is, you know, detrimental to the melatonin levels, then it's going to be a huge positive to have done it. Um, another one that's a conspiracy theorist's dream is fluoride in the water system and in the toothpaste. Now, there is some evidence of it. Again, it's disputed. Um, but is it going to negatively affect your life to go and have a water filter and fluoride-free toothpaste? I suggest not. So might be worth considering. Um, I have a, a feeling that there's a lot of statistically insignificant findings um, that when they're all added up, they become statistically significant but the way that science works is it's looking at all these factors individual and individually and going oh they're all right um but when they're all added together i have a feeling that they're they are affecting our melatonin levels um so yeah it's just food for thought you don't have to follow anything you know even if you just make one or two little changes it's going to be beneficial to you anyway